Hi, Kevin Ledoux, the Pragmatic Luther, back again. Uh, it's been a while because I've been so busy I haven't had time to do much with videos, but I got a few minutes, so I thought I'd share with you um, a couple of ideas here about back bracing. Um, I'm making a huge 18-inch jumbo guitar for a client, and this is being made out of soft maple. I want to tighten this back up. Um, I suppose you could do that by making the back thicker, but I want to keep the guitar as light as possible. And I don't think a thick back is always an answer. So when I say I want a back a little bit thinner, I'm talking, eh, I'm going to say 95 to 100 thousandths of an inch. So we're going to have four braces across this thing, but I want to tighten this thing. I want, I want to add a little bit more percussiveness, a little more punch. And as I mentioned earlier, I want to keep the weight down. So my way of doing that is to make laminated braces. Now, this might sound kind of cockamamie to some folks, but I've used this technique a lot, and I really like it. And I also have a way to kind of extend your materials dollar a little bit uh, by using this technique. It relies on whatever soft wood you want to make your bracing out of. Now, you could use spruce for this, obviously, but... I don't like to use spruce for bracing a back for one reason and one reason only. Good spruce bracing stock is going to be expensive stuff. And I live in the northeastern United States, so it doesn't grow right around here. So I get mine from sources in Alaska. That makes it expensive, and it's a prime material for bracing a top, so I like to conserve. Well. Western red cedar is nice, and it is readily available to me here, even though it doesn't grow in this region. Um, there's a couple of premium lumber yards in the area where I can get it. Now, you can also get Western red cedar, I've noticed, at some of the big box stores, but the grade of the stuff is pretty low, so you'd have to be pretty selective if you bought any of it there. What I do is I buy Western red cedar one by four. You don't need to buy it any wider just gets more expensive as it gets wider. But what I look for is that it is perfectly flat sawn. I want to see that grain across that width as flat as you can get it. Now there's going to be some arching to it, of course, but as flat as you can get it so that when you slice it, you've got quartered grain in your brace. That's important. So what I'll do with that one by four is I'll resaw that into thin slivers. These happen to be, I don't know, I think these are 3 32nds or a 16th, I don't remember exactly. But you can decide how many laminates you want in your brace and divide that out from there. You could use, I suppose, two, just two halves if you want, if you just want to stiffen the brace. But if you want to strengthen it and keep it thinner, uh, narrower, I should say, then you can work that out any way you want. I'm combining this with maple strips. And I've worked this out so that three laminates, two cedar and one of these is going to give me a 5 16th brace. And I've also done some others here with two maple laminates in them. And that's going to give me a 3 8 brace. I'm going to use quarter inch for the number one and two, and I'm going to use 3 8 for the three and four braces. So I'll give you just a quick uh, picture, if you will, of how I glue these up, a couple of tips that I've learned from it, and, and we'll go from there. I make my laminated brace stock in three and a half inch widths. The reason being, uh, that's what the Western Red Cedar comes in that I'm buying. It's one by four, so it's three and a half wide. And if you make it any wider, uh, you just run the risk of not getting a great glue surface or a, a good glue bond among all of the layers. So it's something to be concerned about. But it also is really not worthwhile, really, uh, to make it in narrow widths like this because you're only going to get maybe two braces out of that width at best, and it's just a lot more work. Now, I'm going to do a mock-up of how I put this together with these narrow strips because I've already made up what I need. And then I thought, well, gee, you should do a video. So I'm kind of behind the eight ball. But 
I'm going to do this dry because it's not for real, but you'll get the idea. So I put my layers down and I'm going to glue those and I'm going to be careful to glue both surfaces. Um, I don't want to glue one surface and put the next layer down on it dry. I want a nice thin coat of glue on all surfaces. I'm going to get a better bond that way. And I lay those up fully glued. Get them nice and straight as best as I can. And you may already be able to see that I'm working over a piece of wax paper. That's very important. Um, it just keeps the glue from spreading out all over your bench or whatever surface you're working. So I fold that over. Right. This is easy. Everybody knows how to do this, I'm sure. I'm probably preaching to the choir. But I put that down and an adequate number of clamps. You give that some tightening and tighten it down till the glue squeezes out, but don't overdo it because you can starve a joint. Uh, Allophatic resin glue, I believe, only needs 10 pounds per square inch, so it's, it's not like you got to park your car on it. All right, so that's it as far as making it is concerned. I will show you a finished brace and uh, a little bit of the process of making them up and will be done. Now I know I've shown this technique before, uh, but hey, sometimes repetition is a good thing, right? Besides, uh, I fell in love with my wife almost 49 years ago, uh, but then I fell in love with my shaper, so I love to show it off. Uh, I got my braces made up here, cut to, uh, cut to width, and I'm going to use my shaper jig to arch those braces to a 25 foot radius. We're just going to put that on there. Center of the brace goes in the center of the jig. I lock that down with toggle clamps, which I truly believe in. And we're going to turn this on and shape the brace. So here's a finished brace with the arch in it that I just did on the shaper. You can see the arch and you can see the layers in it. Three layers in this one and five layers in this one. This one is not arched yet, but it will be tomorrow morning. So these will be glued down, of course, at the go bar deck, and they're just as easy to carve um, and scallop out as any other brace. In fact, maybe a little easier because you're not going to have uh, grain working against you, pulling any tricks, at least not to the nasty extent that a solid brace can. So my idea here is to stiffen the back and make it a little more percussive. That's the goal. It's also to give me a strength uh, in a brace that I can't get in a solid piece of wood, uh, you know, to increase that strength without having to increase weight. And I think that's one of the reasons I like cedar too, because it is lightweight, and then the hardwood laminates give you that stiffness and extra strength that I'm after. So that's about it. I hope this is a technique that you might be able to use in your shop. And I hope you like watching the video. Um, I'd ask you to put a like on it if you did, and maybe subscribe to my channel. Again, this is Kevin Ledoux, the Pragmatic Luther uh, at Ledoux Guitars, the largest manufacturer of guitars in the entire town of Triangle, New York. Thanks again.